Hey everyone, Charlie here. For today's talking time, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to talk from inside the car. So if I ramble even more than a normal talking time, then you'll know why. Because I'm trying to drive too. And uh, yeah. Anyway, today's talking time topic, or ranting time topic, or whatever you want to call these things, um, comes, from, uh, comes from Simone. And she asked, Charlie, what do you do to choose, or how do you choose the, uh, the, na uh, the, the pieces that you're going to play when you're giving a concert, right? Like if you're giving a recital concert, how do you choose the, the type of what you're going to play? Um, if you're giving a uh, concerto concert, how do, you think, how do you choose what pieces that you are going to play? I get to, oh, okay, let's go. All righty, as we screw the two, all right, we're good. Um, so that's a great question actually and there is not one answer but there's kind of a general kind of way it works so uh there's as you a lot of you know who uh follow you know a lot of what i do is i give mainly two different types of concerts right most of the time like 99 percent of the concerts i give are going to either be uh solo recitals where i'll play like an hour and a half of uh of solo music by myself just a piano on the stage nothing else um or I'll give a concerto concert where I'll be like the, the guest artist or, you know, that is what they call it, um, with an orchestra. So the orchestra will have me come in and maybe they'll have two or three concerts or two concerts on a weekend, maybe one, depending on where it is. And anyway, the first piece in the program is usually an orchestra piece. Then I come out and I'll play a concerto, which is a three part piece that I play with an orchestra. Um, then they'll take a break and then they're going to have a, uh, uh, a, a symphony, like a, a long piece that the orchestra plays by itself. So I'm only really coming out for about a half an hour on that one. And then the former type, the recitals, are oftentimes, you know, hour and a half, two longer programs total, including intermission. So I might be playing up there, you know, up to an hour and a half or, or so. Um, so those are very, you know, very different types of, of concerts. So um, who picks the pieces and how do I pick them? So some, it kind of depends oftentimes on a lot of things. So if it's a place that I've never played before, and let's say they don't really know who I am or whatever, they're inviting me to play, uh, sometimes they have a specific thing that they want, right? Like if it's an orchestra, you know, maybe they need someone to play this particular concerto because it fits in with the rest of the stuff they have in the concert and the concert was planned ahead of time and, you know, all that stuff. So they'll say, well, can you play this piece? And if the answer is yes, then I can. And if the answer is no, but I can learn it, then I can. And, you know, of course it depends on schedules and sometimes there's overlaps and funky stuff like that. But basically they'll ask me what, uh, if I can play a particular piece or maybe they'll have a couple pieces, right? Um, it's like, oh, they need a Beethoven concerto. So which one do you prefer? Or do you have something like that? Um, same thing goes with recital. Sometimes there's a very specific, this is less frequent, I think, but sometimes there's a very specific type of recital that they want to have. Like, let's say that they have a, a theme of, of, of Beethoven uh, this year or something, right? So they might be like, okay, well, um, Charlie, can you play piece, you know, a concert that's mainly Beethoven or something or, you know, something like that. And so you might either learn or bring up pieces that you played in the past that fits within what they want to play. Or maybe they have, might have a specific thing. Um, those are less common. Usually when you are playing uh, a, by yourself, a uh, recital, you have a lot more freedom in terms of what you can, what you can do, right? So um, most of the time they don't care. Sometimes if it, if it's the same piece that someone else has played that same season or a previous recent season, then they might be like, oh, can we switch this out with something else? But usually those are more flexible. The concerto ones are usually a little bit more, um, um, oh, there's a nice Rolls Royce. Um, usually they're more uh, more stringent. Now, when if there's a case where like I know the the presenter, right? Like I played with the orchestra before, and I know the conductor now, and we're friends, or or we, uh, you know, I played this this series before, or whatever. Then they might be like, okay, Charlie, what do you want to play? It's like you, uh, we want to have you back or something. Uh, do you have a preference? Like, are there some pieces that you would like to, to perform with us? And then I then I can be like, oh yeah, sure. Um, you know, I'm like to play these pieces at some point. And then they'll it kind of goes the other way, right? Then it's like, okay, uh, that's you know we've already played this one, but this one that you suggested is good. So you know that that works. So um, that's that's a lot of fun because then it's not so much. Um, then I can kind of do you know have, I have more flexibility to what I'm playing, um, which is a lot of. It's good, it's good. Um, 
Now, when I'm choosing pieces in general, it's like a broad picture thing, um, I like to generally play pieces that I like. And um, I, I know a lot of you know that I'm not a big fan of like atonal, super ultra modern music where you're strumming stuff inside the, the piano and like plucking things and spinning around three times. And, and I've played pieces, um, I've played pieces where I've literally, you know, you reach into the piano and strum the strings like a harp. And I mean, there, there's, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, I've heard of a piece where people throw, oh, I've seen someone perform a piece where they literally threw a bucket of like plastic balls into the piano. No, no, I don't want to play that. And so I, I you know, I, I don't. Um, sometimes I get requests to play pieces of music that I'm not as fond of. And you know, I'm not completely against learning stuff you know, that I don't really like, but, you know, it kind of depends, right? Um, I'm, I'm trying to focus mainly, though, on the stuff that I like to play because it's, it's, it just makes everything a lot more enjoyable for me. And um, it's more, I don't know if I want to say true to myself, but it's just more true to what I enjoy, I guess. My watch is going off like crazy. Oh, cacao talk. Anyway, um, so yeah, so I try to you know, play pieces that I like. Uh, and, you know, a lot of you know that I like kind of late classical, romantic style, you know, very tonal, that kind of thing, like Chopin and Beethoven and all that stuff. Um, but I do play a lot of other stuff too, you know, Baroque music and classical, classical, and, you know, early classical and like contemporary. So I do do a lot of that as well. But I really prefer and like, uh, like late classical slash romantic. Um, now, I, when I'm programming pieces, I also really always try to factor in who it is that I'm playing for and how long, right? Like a lot of the times when I give a recital, I'm playing for like an hour and a half to two hours or whatever. Um, and so that's a very different way of programming than if I'm playing a 50 minute concert or a 15 minute short little performance or something, right? And I also, so I have to consider how long I have to play and also I have to consider what the audience is. So let me give you an example. So. Um, a few years ago, I did a series of, uh, of all Schubert concerts at the Gardner Museum in, uh, in Boston. I gave three hour-long all Schubert concerts. And for those of you who know Schubert, Schubert's an amazing composer. He has amazing music, but it's not really flashy. It's not really uh, like over the top. You know, it, you, it requires, you know, the people who are listening to really kind of like, you know, look inside as they listen and be very kind of introverted and, and, and contemplative, contemplative, cont contemplate, you know. And am I going to miss my exit? Hang on. Now I think I got one more. Got one more exit. All right. I didn't turn on the nap. Anyway, um, so in an audience that's very, you know, very, let's say that it's an audience that really knows classical music. They know all the intricacies. They've heard the pieces that you're going to play by a bajillion different pianists and recordings and stuff, and they really know the music. You can play a different program for those type of for that type of audience than you can for an audience that say isn't really familiar with classical music. And so, like the the concerts that I gave, the Schubert concerts, the first two of which are commercially available, so check them out. You can buy them on like everywhere. Um, but if you go on my website, it's the best. But they're also streaming. Um, anyway. Uh, you can play, you know, you can play different pieces for audiences who really know classical music uh, than you can play for audiences who don't. And uh, just like you wouldn't take a, you know, yeah, it, 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 it just makes sense, right? Um, so uh, an audience that has never been to a classical concert before probably wouldn't do so well in a, in a, in a, uh, in a concert where the programming is like all Schubert and all super quiet and all, um, I don't want to say boring, but like could come off as boring um, to a to someone who doesn't know the classical music super well. Whereas it could be really, really great for someone who really appreciates that particular style of music. So I really kind of think about who my audience is. Um, so at the same time, I found personally that even in even with audiences who are very, very into classical music, you know, that people who go to concerts all the time, really appreciate it. Out of those, out of those audience members, my guess is that a very small proportion of even, even those people who truly appreciate classical music, um, 
it's my impression that even a small percentage of those actually uh, know each measure by measure every single note. They're classical music enjoyers, right? They really appreciate it. They can, you know, they can sit through the harder to listen to pieces, you know, the ones that you might, you might get a little restless if it's really long and really slow and really quiet or something. But a lot of those people do not know the exact, you know, every single note, every single nuance, which is which is perfectly normal, right? Like, you know, you can be an art lover of, of you know, of beautiful art and not know every single little, you know, stroke and brush style and, you know, thing that that particular artist used, but you're a big appreciator of it. So I found that even in, you know, hoity-toity places, let's say, where, you know, the audiences are going to be more inclined to... Uh, uh, appreciate like the serious, serious type of classical music. Even those audiences really appreciate the lighter stuff, the funner stuff, the faster, over the top stuff. So even at serious places, I try to make a make the concert so that it's accessible to to everyone. Uh, because inevitably, there's going to be some people who've never been to a classical concert in the audience, and even among the people who really, really go all the time and appreciate it, who might be more inclined to appreciate a lot of the. Um, more uh, uh, restrained works or whatever, uh, a lot of those people will still really appreciate the funner stuff too. So I really try to keep my concerts so for the most part they're accessible to 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 everyone because I think that's important. Um, I told you I uh, I think you guys know I played uh, the at Carnegie Hall. I uh, last year I gave a, my debut on the main stage of Carnegie Hall, and I for the encore did Great Balls of Fire, and you know. It was the scariest place I've ever done Great Balls of Fire in, but it was, you've never seen so many like screaming 80, 90 year old ladies. It was awesome. There's people who are very, you know, you think that Carnegie Hall might have one of the most, you know, uh, uh, mature, sophisticated audiences in the world, and they do, but they still love to get down and dirty with some Great Balls of Fire, you know? So I try to keep it fun for everyone um, at all the concerts. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so I, I try to, you know, think about what I have in terms of time and who I'm playing for, right? And uh, those two things really influence a lot of what I do, along with along with what I like to play. I'm trying to play more and more of what I like because when I play what I like, you know, I, I think it hopefully comes across um, that I'm really enjoying it. And obviously you want to be able to come across as you're really enjoying it, even if you're playing something you don't enjoy. But um, I think it's, it's more, I just... I like playing my the stuff that I like to play. Part of the reason why I'm doing more and more improvisations in concerts, the audiences seem to really love it too, and uh, and yeah. And sometimes there's a little pushback, right? Sometimes uh, this might be a topic for another another talking time, but like a lot of people know that I do a lot of um, uh, improvisations in concerts. Sometimes I do an entire concert that's improvised, and sometimes there's a little bit of hesitation because that's not normal, right? That's not the norm in the classical music world. It's kind of pushing down. Um, norms. I'm saying norms too much. But anyway, that's probably a discussion for another talking time. Everyone out there, smash the like button. Smash it, hit, make it turn blue. Um, go and uh, share and comment and all that stuff for the algorithms because that helps a lot. Helps quite a bit. And I will see you all on another talking time or wherever. So you guys stay safe, stay healthy, keep smiling. And I'll see you guys later.